Code monkey get up get coffee Code monkey go to job Code monkey have boring meeting With boring manager Rob Rob say code monkey very diligent But his output stink His code not functional or elegant What do code monkey think? Code monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself Code monkey not say it out loud, code monkey not crazy, just proud. Code monkey like Fritos. Code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code monkey very simple man. Big warm fuzzy secret heart. Code monkey like you. Code monkey like you. new dino dudes it's me the meteor after this episode has been a long time coming so uh flashback real quick maybe two years ago or so i made a review on the odd yet entertaining tales from the crypt cartoon tales from the crypt keeper i really enjoyed the show and i knew there was another show in the tales from the crypt universe that was like a weird game show kind of thing but i hadn't really looked into it so, a couple months ago, I was going through some old comments, just, you know, applying, checking stuff, and, uh, there was one. Oh, hang on. One from a YouTuber named Failed Fortitude. They commented about a year ago, actually, uh... Yeah, I, this video, I don't know why I kept putting off making it. I've been meaning to make this for a while. If you're, if you're watching this by any chance, Failed Fortitude, sorry it took me so long, but this video is dedicated to you. So... You might be thinking, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tales from the Crypt had a game show? What kind of game show? Well, it's a 1990s game show, so I'm talking stuff like Legends of the Hidden Temple, Nickelodeon's Gak, a hole in the wall that's more of a modern one, and the one that I watched all the time was this really weird one called Fetch with Rough Roughman. I don't know if anybody out there remembers it, and apparently it's like got a weird reboot going on with the old spies and stuff now. But I remember watching it as a kid because it was like, I was on TVO Kids and that was one of the few channels I used to get because when I was a kid we didn't have internet. Times change. So, in on September 14th, 1996, Secrets of the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House would air for the first time. I'll be honest, that's a bit of a long title, but I like it. Continuing in the odd tradition of, hey, this, you know this thing that was not made for kids? Let's make it for kids. They decided to make a Tales from the Crypt TV show. That was also a game show. I don't have a lot to say about this. Like, I don't have like a big introduction or explanation because I can't find much about it. In fact, the footage you're going to see, I want to apologize now. It might seem a little weird, a little like pixeling and stuff like that. This is the only episode I could actually find online at all. I'll leave a link down below to where I found the footage so you can watch it for yourself. But as far as I know, there is no like DVD, there's no like home recording. The only way I think people might still have access to this is if they had home recordings of it back in the 90s and I sure didn't. I wasn't even born when the show came out. Okay, okay. With all that out of the way, Tales from the Crypt Game Show. What's it about? Well, each week they would get two teams of kids, one of them wearing black, one of them wearing red, and they would put them through nine games. Well, there were nine challenges in total. I don't remember exactly how many. I think they would do like three in the first round, three in the second round. Uh, okay, and five events, sorry. They would do five events over two rounds and then one finale event sort of thing. And... It's kinda an interesting show, though. They got John Kassir back to play the Crypt Keeper, who now acts as the sort of host, making fun of them, making jokes, having fun, and actually just doing a great job. I'm pretty sure they used the same puppet they used from the Tales from the Crypt TV show, which is good, because that thing looks amazing. Uh... Sorry, stay hydrated, kids. Now, what were these games? Well... I'm just going to list off the names real quick, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail, and you'll see them on screen. So forgive me if I'm looking down, I'm just going to read uh, 
a couple sentences off of each of the games so you know an idea what they're talking about. Fireball Alley. At one member of each team defending a set, a set of six headstones from the fireballs of a computer-generated skull named Digger. So for each uh, tombstone that they survived, they would get points for because that's how the show worked. You would try and earn the most points, and then whoever had the most points in the end won. Orminator. Essentially, you would carry uh, balls at three strategic points through a wind tunnel. Any dropped balls would be vaporized, and you wouldn't get the points for them. The Incredible Shrinking Room? Pretty much what it sounds like. Essentially, you had to, you had to uh, find the missing letter in each of six words within 40 seconds. The category of the list was the same for both teams, and it was told to the home audience by Digger, who was essentially the Crypt Keeper's right-hand man, or his friend, or his partner. He was a new character for the show, and I think he worked fine. The Swamp from Hell would occasionally be a stand-in for the Worminator, and essentially it would be have one person starting outside jumping on a trampoline trying to grab skulls off of hooks for 15 seconds. Yeah, this game show was surprisingly morbid at times with making kids grab skulls and stuff, and I get, I get it's like a cheesy horror thing, but I just love that fact. Uh, so, eventually with each skull they got, that mean that one bag of skulls was placed on a platform by a CGI lava pit. On the other side of the lava pit was another platform, and the two were bridged by a balance beam, so then the players on each team would have to essentially walk across a pit of CG lava and hope they don't end up getting Anakin Skywalkered by a guy with the high ground. Fourth round, so essentially these are like the more intense games. Ghost Battle, essentially it's jousting with Digger who now had a full skeletal body. The Abyss, you have to uh, climb a tower lettered with numbers and well, the other team, you'd, have, you'd get five questions, and then you would try and uh, spell things out, press the button next to it to get the right answer. Endless Hallway. Effectively, you would walk on what the equivalent of a treadmill was for 75 seconds, and you would have to take note of various things that kind of you saw there. It's like those Mario Party games when you get a few seconds to try and count like how many Goombas are on the screen, and then somebody will ask, Hey, how many of this? Or what was that one holding? Or where was that? And the player has to try and correctly remember where they saw stuff from. So, Vampire's Lair, which is actually the one I found the most interesting, and this one could have actually been quite dangerous. Uh, one player went into a room, which would light up with strobe lights for a few seconds, then go dark. The player outside would guide the player in the middle of the room by looking into a video feed from a night vision camera, and in the middle of the room was a switch that would awaken a vampire. Each team would have one minute to reach this, well, minute and 45 to reach the switch. The team that had used less time to wake it would get 20 points. And if you, neither team got it, then no points were given. I feel like that could actually have kind of gotten some kids injured, and I'm pretty sure that's why uh, release forms are so insanely thick these days when it comes to shows, and especially with minors being filmed and stuff. I should know, I've actually been in a number of, I've actually worked on film sets and been in a movie at this point as an extra. The amount of stuff you have to sign, even if you're just going to stand in a crowd, is kind of nuts. Pays well, though. And finally, there was a game called Skullduggery, which, effectively, you would have to go through the haunted house one last time in search of skulls. You would search about four rooms or so, and whenever the buzzer went off, you would have to uh, move to the next room. Then, at the end of that, you would race out with your skulls, and you would impale the skulls onto a large skewer. Whoever had the most skulls there got 50 points. And usually that would help whoever won that would usually win the day. Can we just take a moment and acknowledge how morbid that is, and yet I love that so much? Nice knowing ya! This, from what I can tell, actually, this game show is not really that well remembered for the games. It's more remembered for the effects. See, stuff like uh, Fireball Alley and The Swamp from Hell were actually what I believe, don't quote me on this, one of the earlier game shows to use CG in a 3D like style. See, what, okay, what do I mean? Okay, have a look at this footage from uh, Fireball Alley. See, they would have a 3D image projected to sort of be this character, like they would, like what you would see nowadays in a sort of virtual reality kind of thing, but they would actually have it affect the game it was playing in real life. That kind of stuff, I don't...
really know if it was ever done before up until this point, and I, from what I can tell, people actually really did like it. It was a really interesting idea. Uh, but yeah, these games were all kind of a mix of Fear Factor, a mix of Minute to Win It, and a mix of Adrenaline Rush kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, you know, the games, the titles actually are a bit misleading. Like, Worminator, you'd think, oh, okay, is that like, you dig your hands into a thing of worms and try and find a key? No, you just picked up a ball, walked through a wind tunnel, and you were trying to get the most points. The Incredible Shrinking Room, at least, does live up to its name, where it was a word puzzle where you had to find missing letters to fill words within the small amount of time you had, as the walls would look like they were closing in on you. So... All these game shows tend to have a prize of some sort. You can look at the whole uh, Nickelodeon gack thing, or whatever that show was, or... Whatever that show was when that one kid lied to get on and he broke his arm because he had, like, frail bones, and that led to a whole thing. What was Secret of the Tables... Ugh, sorry, I get these names mixed up. Secrets of the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House. What was the prize here? Encyclopedias and Apple computers. That was actually a pretty big deal back in the 19 in 1997. Getting an Apple Mac, like the old original Mac, that was worth like 500, 600 ish dollars. I guess I don't actually know, and I didn't bother looking it up. I feel dumb now. Uh, it's kind of this isn't exactly a review per se, but it's kind of an interesting look back at what the show used to be. The show didn't run that long. It lasted about a year, and then was eventually canceled. And I believe. New Tales from the Crypt Keeper came out after it, uh, and then that was it. We got nothing, really. There's been some reboots in the comics, there was an attempt to get a new Tales from the Crypt show going, but this, Secrets of the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House, with the exclusion of one, I believe, like, 2012, uh, New Year's Eve party thing and a couple, like, Halloween haunt attractions, this was the last Tales from the Crypt live-action show. Now, yes, like I said, Halloween Haunt at Universal, it was a New Year's Eve thing, like, the Crypt Keeper and John Kassir have come back for a couple of cameos here or there, but in terms of, like, a mainline Crypt TV show, <laughs> I love that channel, this was it. So, was it a good send-off to the Tales from the Crypt mythos and the Tales from the Crypt world? I'd say so. It got a kinda charming horror vibe down. The kids always seem to be having a good time. The challenges looked like a lot of fun, like something you would actually see on, say, maybe a kid's version of American Ninja Warrior. And the game was a unique style. Like I said, there was Legends of the Hidden Temple and stuff like that. That was a pretty big one back in the day. But I don't think there was ever really a horror-themed uh, game show. For kids, especially. So that idea alone makes it pretty unique. Now... Sadly, I would like to say go out and check it out if you get the chance. I, like I said, I don't think that is possible. From what I can tell, this show never had any home video releases. It never had a, like, huge rerun. It's not, like, as popular or as well-known as Tales from the Crypt or even Tales from the Crypt Keeper. It's kind of almost a piece of lost media. And to be honest, that makes it all the more interesting. Anything I could find about it, I thought was just really cool. Because, like I said, they used the same puppet. They got John Kassir back. It wasn't just a random, hey, we have the name for this, let's make something out of it. It was, okay, we got John Kassir back, we got the puppet, we got the vibe, let's make a horror game show, it will be fun. And it had a great mix of CGI, very, very 90 CGI, but especially for TV CGI, and especially CGI that was used in like game show kind of stuff, or like arcade, like theme park attractions. It looked pretty good. It was pretty creepy. Uh, the music was great. Sadly, there wasn't really a theme song for this, the same way there was for Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Crypt Keeper. And now, it's showtime! <laughs> From Universal Studios Florida, kiddies! It's Secrets of the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House! <laughs> but... It's just kinda... It's own thing. And at the end of the day, 
I think that's kind of the main thing you should take away from this. Secrets of the Crypt Keeper's Haunted House is its own thing. Like I said, this is not really a review per se, I'm not going to give it a rating. But I do recommend you check it out if you're a fan of Tales from the Crypt, because it's just interesting, I think is the best way to put it. Because I kind of wonder, if it came back today, what would it look like? Would it be for kids? Would it be for adults? And I'm not just talking Tales from the Crypt, I'm talking this game show in particular. Because it kind of seems like game shows for kids are kind of falling out of style. That or I just stopped watching like Nickelodeon and YTV and television and stuff like that. If you don't know what YTV or Teletoon is, it's essentially the Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon in Canada, because I'm Canadian, just the way it is. But I'd almost like to see a game show come back, like an animated live-action game show make a return. I, I always liked these ideas. The whole idea of a game show where kids or even a whole family can come on and win prizes, have a good time. They've always seemed harmless, and they always do seem to get a lot of views, and they always do seem to be at least very well received. And I think there's a lot of room that they could improve with this. See, a big part of this was actually you would be going through the Crypt Keeper's house, where each episode would like... Well, the theme song of Tales from the Crypt would take you through until you got to the basement where the Crypt Keeper appeared, blah blah blah. This one, they actually kind of mapped out his house a little bit and went, okay, go through the mansion. And it's obvious, a ton of love and care went into all the sets, into all the designs, and it really does show. Heck, the show actually received a Daytime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Game Show in 1997, losing to The Price is Right, which was also a CBS show. Here's the thing, it is one of the only it is only one of two children's game shows to ever be nominated for this. The other one was a show called Brain Surge in 2012. It's kind of funny that a show that even got nominated for an Emmy was clearly attached to a franchise people love, had a lot of people participate and a lot of passion put into it, just... disappeared. Sometimes that's just the way it is, though. And that's why I wanted to make this video, though. If you guys can, find any copy you can, find any footage you can, throw it up online, make copies of it, circulate it around. I don't want this to disappear. I can only find the one episode, but I'd love to see more. I really do think that this show deserves, not to have like a whole like, whole revival campaign and stuff, but I think it at least deserves some more acknowledgement than it gets. Be that DVD releases or even just throwing them up on iTunes. I'd like to see this show be remembered. Because I know a lot of people, or I know a lot of people older than me who grew up with Tales from the Crypt. I called up some of my dino dudes or my friends. They told me, yeah, I remember watching that. It's a show that people, when you bring it up, often go, wait, Secrets of the Crypt Keeper is Haunted? Yes! It's one of those weird shows that people who grew up on CBS will often kind of forget they watched and then remember. And I want to change that. The show's charming, it's funny, it's creepy, it's entertaining. I'm not saying we need to revive the show, I'm just saying remember it, please. And I don't really think I'm anybody who can make a difference in that regard, but hey, that's why I wanted to make this video. So long as this review's up there, hopefully somebody will remember it, aside from me. And while we're at it, can we please get another re-release of the Tales from the Crypt movie Ritual, the third one? The only Blu-ray release I can find is like $200 on eBay, and like that... I don't even know if the movie's worth that, like... I don't know. Yeah, they made a third movie, it was kind of weird, because the movie was made... without the intention of being Tales from the Crypt, and then it got, uh intro and outro from the Crypt Keeper added like really quickly before the movie was released and then apparently the movie didn't do so good and that's why we didn't really see more theatrical tales from the Crypt films which sucks because Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight are actually really entertaining with Demon Knight being one I watch every year at Halloween. Still, like I said, I'm gonna leave links down below, go check out the show, pass it around, and if you remember the show, let me know if you ever grew up on it. Heck, this might seem like a weird request, but if you were on the show, let me know. I'd love to know what it was like. 
Anyhow, with that being said, that's all the time I got for this episode, Dino Dudes. You might be thinking, okay, this is a weird way to start Season 6. Yeah, it might be a weird way to start, but I'm working on the 1,000 subscriber special, it's gonna be a bit longer, and it's on Thomas and the Magic Railroad, which for some reason, Thomas movies always get a ton of views for some reason, I don't know why you guys watch, watch those more than anything else, but yeah, uh... I'm going to be diving way, way, way back into my childhood to talk about the good, the bad, and the fact that there was such a good idea in there, but it just didn't happen. Still, I probably should have thought of like a funny Tales from the Crypt style pun before I ended here, so... Bye! <laughs>